Welcome to the Jerika Suki Nature Museum's 11th Annual Creepy Critters Halloween Program. This year we go virtual as we set out to debunk myths about nocturnal creatures and learn more about local wildlife. We hope you have a spooktacular time! Badgers are members of the skunk and weasel family. They have a flattened body and short and stocky legs with fur that ranges from grayish to reddish. Their triangular faces, which help them dig a nose into tight spaces, are dark in color with white stripes down their nose and over their eyes. Badgers have a strong sense of smell, hearing, and vision. When threatened, these animals hiss and growl and can also emit a musky odor similar to their cousin, the skunk. Badgers can be found in dry, open grasslands, fields, and pastures, primarily in the Great Plains of North America. Badgers are important consumers of many small prey in their ecosystem. They are nocturnal predators, preying on insects, prairie dogs, mice, birds, and groundhogs. They also kill venomous snakes and insects and help control rodent populations which may carry disease and damage crops. Their burrows provide shelter for other animals and their digging activity allows for soil development. Due to their superb digging skills, they are sometimes seen hunting alongside coyotes. Badgers dig up rodents burrowed underground and the coyotes readily catch them as they try to run away. Not to be confused by the average Thanksgiving turkey, turkey vultures are much more different. They are large flying birds that feed off of the flesh of dead animals and are capable of flying low to the ground to pick up the smell of dead animals. These barbarian-like birds don't even make nests. They simply lay their eggs directly on the ground in well-hidden areas. In attempt to defend themselves, they can projectile vomit distances up to 10 feet, making a great predator repellent. Turkey vultures' digestive juices kill bacteria, hence why they don't get sick from their dead animal diet. Not to mention these birds survive in the wild for around 20 years. The next critter we are going to talk about today is the raccoon. Raccoons are mammals that are native to North America. They look very round and fuzzy from a distance, but are most often recognized for their striped tail and the fur on their face resembling a bandit mask. Raccoons are a lot bigger than you think they'd be, with some of them growing to the size of a small dog. These guys can also get pretty heavy, weighing up to 23 pounds. Raccoons are adaptable to all sorts of weather, so they can live in both snowy climates and more temperate ones. They do not hibernate, but instead sleep longer than usual in the winter and live off stored body fat when they can't find food. These guys are also omnivorous, which means they eat both meat and plants. They enjoy eating a lot of different fruits, but will sometimes also eat frogs, mice, or even bird eggs. Sometimes people have seen raccoons washing their hands in a stream or other water source before eating, which is kind of a fun fact. Raccoons' homes are called dens. They make these dens in a cave, trees, and sometimes even barns. Females have their babies or cubs in the early summer. They can have up to seven in one year, but two or three is more common. These cubs become independent at around eight months and go on to live for about two to three years. The whip scorpion is technically not an actual scorpion and belongs to the arachnid family. Their tail may be intimidating at first glance, but it's simply a sensory organ. These creepy crawlers, on average, measure out to be around two inches, one in particular having a record of 3.3 inches. Fear not. The whip scorpion isn't capable of stinging or hurting you at all, as they completely lack venom glands. Although they can't hurt you, they are known to spray a vinegar-smelling substance on predators, earning them the name vinegaroons. Ticks are tiny pests that are set out to suck your blood. They require blood for proper nourishment, but not only human blood. Depending on the type of tick, they can feed off of dogs, mice, small wild animals, birds, and white-tailed deer. Once on its prey, ticks lodge their teeth firmly into the skin with plans to stay on and feast for days. These pests aren't insects, they belong to the arachnid family. When viewed closely, you will spot their four legs and missing antenna, somewhat like a spider. For a lot of people, spiders send a chill up their spine. Fear not, a lot of spiders are often misunderstood, while others can surely make a person run. Spiders are great for the ecosystem. 
They take care of the populations of pests and alleviate the spread of disease that could be spread by their prey. Scientists have found over 35,000 species of spiders, 3,000 of them being in North America, and there are more to be discovered. Female spiders can lay up to 3,000 eggs at a time, and they are also known for eating their mate. The majority of spiders do not bite humans, and if they do, they are typically not harmful. However, there are species of spiders, such as the black widow, that have a very venomous bite that can be life-threatening. It may surprise you that there is probably a spider near you. Studies have shown that you are never more than 10 feet away from a spider. Good news is that they typically do not cause any disturbances and mindfully go about their day spinning their web. Harvestmen, better known as daddy long legs, are arachnids with tiny bodies and leg spans measuring out to be around six inches. While they seem to be so, the harvestmen don't identify as true spiders. Close up, these critters have their head, thorax, and abdomen all pecked into its one body, while the average spider is split into two parts. Not to mention, they only have two eyes, while spiders have a whopping eight. Harvestmen are carnivores, but don't worry, they won't eat you. They are more focused on prey their own size, like beetles, caterpillars, and even spiders. It has been said that they have the most toxic venom of all, but that can't be true as they don't have any venom or fangs at all. With eight legs, large and hairy body, and a creepy appearance, tarantulas are less harmful than most people think. There is often a misconception that these spiders have a powerful bite when in reality, their bites contain very little toxins and are equivalent to a bee sting. In fact, tarantulas rarely bite and instead defend themselves by throwing needle-like barbed hairs at their attacker when provoked. Some of the largest tarantulas have a leg span of 10 inches, which is about the size of a dinner plate. Since a fall can be fatal to these furry friends, they have retractable legs that allow them to climb surfaces. If they happen to hurt one of their legs, they can simply grow a new one since they shed their exoskeletons. Instead of spinning webs, tarantulas use silk to decorate their burrows, lay their eggs, and capture their prey. They hunt on foot to capture insects and small animals and use their venom to kill and turn their food into a yummy soup. Up next, we have the big brown bat. They are one of the largest Illinois bats with a wingspan that is around 13 to 16 inches. While they are often found in forest areas, it is not uncommon to find them in uncrowded suburbs. Bats have poor eyesight, so they use a skill called echolocation to help them find prey. To do this, bats make a noise from their throat which ends up traveling through the air. If the sound wave hits an insect or other object, it will bounce back like an echo. These bats' diet consists mostly of insects, specifically beetles, helping keep the insect population in control. Their mouths have 32 sharp, heavy teeth that are capable of causing severe bites. Big brown bats can weigh anywhere between one half to three fourths of an ounce. Some female bats can even eat their body weight in insects every night. They have long brown fur and black wings and ears. Big brown bats can live up to 20 years, but, but the average lifespan is thought to be considerably less. Female bats form colonies with each other to rear young. Babies are born in the late spring, and at three to five weeks, they are already learning to fly. While these bats tend to migrate, they do not go into hibernation as early because of their size. Poison ivy, widely known for its ability to create a blistering rash when one comes in contact with it, has many misconceptions. Though the plant does possess an oil called urushiol that creates a reaction on the skin, not everyone is allergic to it. Depending on a person's immune system, the rash can be either very intense or it can possibly not affect them at all. The reaction also does not appear right away. It takes about 24 to 72 hours after exposure for it to take on a full effect. The rash is also not contagious and there are medications to help alleviate the symptoms. Poison ivy can be difficult to identify. It is characterized by three leaves and changes colors with the seasons. However, many other plants can be defined by the same physical traits. 
Some of the plants sometimes produce small yellow-green flowers, which develop into berries. In fact, poison ivy is related to mangoes. There are also natural ways of killing this plant. Pulling it from the roots gets the job done, but remember to cover as much skin as possible to avoid exposure to its oils. Urushio can linger for years. Though the plant may be gone, its oils can be left behind, and in this way, poison ivy returns from the dead. The common snapping turtle is a large freshwater turtle known for its combative disposition and powerful beak-like jaws. Its rugged shell can range from dark brown and black to tan, while the necks, legs, and tails are yellowish and the head is darker in color. Snapping turtles only live in fresh or brackish waters with muddy bottoms and abundant vegetation so it's easier to hide. They can be found in lakes, ponds, and rivers from central U.S. across southeastern Canada to Nova Scotia and Florida. The common snapping turtle has remarkable cold tolerance. Some individuals don't hibernate but remain active under the ice in winter without breathing for more than six months. Common snapping turtles are important aquatic scavengers that consume both plant and animal matters, such as invertebrates, fish, frogs, and small mammals. These turtles are one of the top predators in their ecosystems. They assist in natural recycling by cleaning up dead organisms from the water they inhabit and by controlling populations of mammals, amphibians, mollusks, reptiles, and insects they prey on. Snapping turtles are not social creatures, so their interactions are limited to aggressive behaviors among males. It is also widely rumored that these turtles can bite off our fingers and toes, but they're mostly docile until threatened or provoked. Striped skunk is commonly found in the wild and also suburban environments in North America, including the USA, Canada, and Mexico. They usually inhabit open habitats such as forests, grasslands, with extensive leafing, more like habitats that are woody and brushy. Striped skunks are known for the two distinct white stripes running across its body, and each individual could develop unique patterns. These types of skunks have poor vision, with objects going blur about 10 feet. Their smelling and hearing is not quite efficient too, but they have an excellent sense of touch. Striped skunks are nocturnal and solitary animals. They breed towards the start of winter and the females give birth to four to five baby skunks at a time. And at average, each skunk lives up to seven years. They prefer to remain secretive, so it is very rare for humans to see them. Striped skunks are omnivorous and feed on a variety of plant and animal matter. These skunks are actually good mouse catchers too and are a significant part of the farm wildlife community as they help control insects and pests. Skunks, in general, are infamous for their ability to expel an obnoxious smell up to 10 feet secreted from their anal glands. This is a part of their defense mechanism that is used to keep predators away. Fun fact, skunks usually smell better than many dogs out there when they do not expel the foul spray. Moreover, these skunks will occasionally do a headstand and stomping in order to intimidate their predators. Striped skunks are misconceptualized for being the number one carriers of rabies, whereas in fact, free-roaming dogs and stray cats could be at a higher risk of contracting the disease in the wild. Next is the red fox. Red foxes have reddish-orange fur along their face and body. Their stomach and the tips of their tails have white fur, and their feet and ears have black fur. These guys are smaller than you'd think, only stacking up to 2 feet tall. They are very slender and can grow up to 3 feet long. Red foxes are solitary animals and do not form packs like wolves do. They are also nocturnal and can be found all across the country. In Illinois, they are most likely to be found in woody areas. Foxes are omnivorous, which means they eat both meat and plants. While they will primarily eat rodents and rabbits, they will also eat things like berries. These guys have superior hearing. This is especially helpful in the winter to find mice running underneath feet of snow. Mating takes place in the winter as well, and afterwards the female will build a den. If not, they'll usually use an old rabbit's den or some other animal. A fox can have anywhere between 1 and 12 babies in a litter. 
Both parents take care of the offspring until the next fall, when the young foxes sit out on their own. Rattlesnakes, a word that drives fear and anxiety among people. They are a group of large venomous snakes that are found throughout North and South America. Rattlesnakes are known for the pattern, heavy bodies, and diamond-shaped head. Each side of its head has a specialized structure known as the pit that is used for heat detection of the prey. To keep away and warn the predators, these creatures shake the rattles on their body that is made of keratin. They are mostly abundant in dry lands such as deserts, open grasslands, and rocky hills. Rattlesnakes are primarily carnivores, and they consume mice, rodents, small birds, and other small mammals. They do so by stalking their prey in silence and pouncing on them. The prey is killed instantly, but even if it manages to escape, the snake can follow it by sensing the scent of its own venom. Rattlesnakes cannot survive extremities of temperature, and they prefer night times to breed. Most rattlesnake species mate during the summer, and their females incubate the eggs inside their own bodies. On average, an adult lives for around 10 to 20 years. This includes all the 29 different species of rattlesnakes. Although rattlesnakes are considered dangerous, they do not exhibit aggressive behavior unless otherwise provoked or threatened. Rattlesnakes' bites can be deadly but rarely, as they can be cured and treated timely to prevent any further complications. Surprisingly, rattlesnakes have also been found several miles in the sea. Who would have expected that? Beavers are the largest rodents in North America and the national animal of Canada. They're built to live in water with their thick waterproof fur, webbed feet, and paddle-shaped tails, which they use to communicate danger by slapping on the surface of water. They also have closable nostrils and ears and transparent eyelids that act like goggles underwater. They can be found around freshwater ponds, lakes, rivers, marshes, and swamps. They're herbivore and prefer to eat leaves, twigs, and aquatic plants. Primarily nocturnal, they spend most of their time eating and building, hence the saying busy as a beaver and eager beaver. A beaver's home is called a lodge, which are little dome-shaped houses made from sticks, grass, and mud just barely above the water level. Beavers are very social and live in groups of lodges called colonies. Most importantly, beavers have a tremendous impact on the ecosystem and are commonly known as environmental engineers because of their remarkable ability to manipulate and change their environment to fit their needs. Using their powerful, constantly growing incisor teeth, they gnaw on trees and create massive dams of logs, branches, and mud to make ponds where there isn't an adequate amount of water. These dams sponge up floodwaters, resolve droughts, purify the water, prevent erosion, and provide aquatic habitat for dozens of other species, such as birds, fish, and amphibians. Thank you for joining us for Creepy Critters. We hope you learned something new, and maybe a little spooky, along the way. Remember, there is a spider within 10 feet of you. Ha 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 ha.